Today I'm going to show you how to refinish a chisel. I do woodworking using only hand tools and so I enjoy going to flea markets and auctions and picking up these old woodworking tools and putting them back into working order. And so today we're going to do a chisel. These are four chisels I've already refinished. They all have the same things in common. I got them at an auction or a flea market for anywhere from a quarter to maybe three dollars. They're all rusty and they're all missing their handles. I've made the handles out of various types of wood, sour gum, ash, and oak. Uh, and they also all have a piece of copper pipe at the end. Uh, the reason for this is because when it's struck with a hammer it keeps the wood together. Not all these are intended to be struck with a hammer, but uh, what this provides me is since I'm not using the lathe, this allows me to make a symmetric handle because I have a starting point here and, and an ending point here. And in between that it's easy to make a symmetric handle. So let's get started. I've got my draw knife, my spoke shave, three different file types from very coarse to very smooth, three different types of sandpaper, 60, 150, and 400. I've got my piece of dried ash, I've got my copper pipe, I've got my wood finish, and some tongue oil finish. And this is the chisel I got at the flea market this morning for three dollars. Uh, it's mostly rusty, uh, not too pitted, and you can see the where the handle was has been flared out because it's been hit with a hammer. Here's the chisel after I cleaned it up. Uh, the marking show is made by PS and W. Uh, there's still pitting on it, but the only thing that really matters on the chisel is the edge, and this is a great edge on it. And then I clean this end up as well, and that'll be ready to receive a handle. Gonna get my depth for the hole here. And I'm gonna mark the depth of the hole on my handle here and leave a little extra. I'm going to make a small cut here around the circumference, which I'm going to pare away a little bit later, and this is what will fit into the chisel. Carefully pare away down to the cut. This is why you have sharp chisels. I'm going to continue to pare away until I get close. I can fit this uh, over that. That's going to fit right on there. I'm going to slowly file away and then look for the bright spots when I try and put the chisel on and that will guide me where to the file next. Almost there. I've got a little epoxy on there just to make sure it seals good. I'm going to place that in the chisel. I'm going to drive it on. Now the chisel's firmly attached to the handle, and I'm going to use my draw knife and spoke shave to take material out and taper it back up to a wide spot here and then taper it back down and I've marked where my piece of pipe is going to go. So let's get started. You can see as, I've, as I'm taking material out the grain's really starting to come through so when I stain it that's really going to look nice. Taking a little bit more right off from around the chisel that way it's a place to hold it when you're hitting it with a hammer so it's really starting to take shape now. 
I'm going to slowly pare away the wood until I can get my piece of pipe on here. I'm going to file this down until there's a nice snug fit for the pipe. Getting there. Now I've pared away all the material and getting ready to put my piece of pipe on. Uh, I've got epoxy on here which expands so it's a good snug fit. You could also um, heat up the copper pipe and make this a little bit larger diameter uh, for a more snug fit, but I just prefer to use epoxy. You can see if you take your time, you can really get a nice symmetric handle. Just about done filing, I'm about to go to sanding. It's starting to look pretty nice. I'm all done sanding it, and now I'm going to put two coats of wood stain on it. Here it is with its first coat of wood stain. I'm going to let it sink in for about 15 minutes before I buff it out and put on a second coat. Now I've put my two coats of wood stain on, and now I've got one coat of tongue oil finish on it. I'm going to do two coats of that, and then I'll be done. Well, here it is. I'm all done. It really turned out great. In fact, it's so nice, I'm not sure I want to strike it with a hammer. Now, there's many more steps you can do to treat both the wood and the metal. I just did the basics today. Uh, the only thing left to do is to sharpen it, and there's plenty of other places on the Internet you can go to learn about that. I hope you enjoyed this, because I sure did.